Johnson River, some of the antique shops, they had it appraised uh, in 82, and they couldn't say whether it was a hundred, at that time, a uh -huh. hundred years old chair or a two hundred year old chair. A lot of people call these corner chairs. Museum catalogs often refer to this as a roundabout chair, and some citations in the South call it a smoking chair. Now, we both know something about this chair that if I lift the seat up, we want to show everybody, okay? And what do we have there? Well, it's a body chair. It's a body chair. <laughs> now, body chairs tend to drop the value of anything. It tends to be worth a fraction of what the standard model is. So it's very important for us to look at this chair and decide when that piece of wood got in there, okay? A lot of times they had a skirt that would hide the pot. And what they would do then is cut the skirt off to make it a more appealing chair. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tilt it up. And if you look here, you see these strips that are nailed in? You can see these nails? These strips are slightly later, not a lot, but just enough later that lets me know they put the potty in later. And a lot of times somebody couldn't leave the bedroom, and so they took an existing chair and just turned it into a potty chair. The other more important thing is when I look at these rails, there's no evidence whatsoever that they cut the rail to trim something to hide the pot. So I'm very comfortable that it didn't start like a potty chair with a deeper skirt. So that, to me, that's very, very important. Let me turn it back here. Oh, the fact that they converted it later doesn't really affect value. I love the legs. It's got four cabriole legs with balm cloth feet. That back leg is very unusual to being a cabriole leg. Typically, it's a simpler leg than the other three. We've got a beautiful S-curve here, very nice, and a pierced flat with what they call the floating diamond. This does come from New York City. Very typical of the New York style. When you look at the way the cabriole legs are done, look at the way the shell is done, and this pattern of splats specifically are all very typical of New York. The name that most often is associated with this type of splat is Gilbert Hash. Now, it's not signed, it's not labeled, and we can't prove it is Gilbert Hash. But if we were going to put up a candidate, he would be first on the list. Do you remember how much you had to pay for it? Well, I bought it with some other items at the time. I think it was about $750, $800. When you had it appraised, in 1982. What was the value then? It was uh, $6,800. But that was the appraiser that said he couldn't verify whether it was a 200-year-old chair or a 100-year-old. Well, yeah, I will guess the finish, which is not the one we most want, was probably what threw them off. It's a really good chair. In a retail setting, this would be priced at around $250,000 to $300,000. Antiques Roadshow.